G'day everyone, my name is Zach and welcome back to Printed. This week we're going to be starting on the 2000 point Grot Army. Now this video will be in a slightly different format to what you guys are used to. I'm going to use it more as a bit of a sit back, relax, update you on how the channel and everything is going. But also run you through how we're going to be starting the 2000 point Grot Army which I'm super super excited to do. So we're just going to jump straight into it. Now I ended up printing a bunch of these guys, I'm pretty sure they're from Mezgeek. Uh, oh, not Mez Geek. So I got these models from Mr. Modulog. After searching for five minutes, I completely blanked on where the hell I got these STLs from. But um, long story short, we're going to start by just uh, assembling these guys. Now, I do actually have three separate ones here. And if you can't tell from uh, this video, one of these guys is actually significantly larger than the other two. Now, I'm only going to be showing you how I painted up one of these guys just for the sake of uh, uh, easeability, and I didn't really feel like recording me painting three of them. But um, I first started by just laying out a bunch of parts. Um, the best thing about Mr. Modulog stuff is the customizability on these things is absolutely insane. So just using a bit of super glue, I went and uh, did the same thing as we usually do on the resin models, and just started by scraping them up and get them all roughed up. Now, I just figured I'd, you know, chuckle these tracks and everything on. They're super easy to build. Like, I didn't even build these with instructions. I kind of just winged it and hoped for the best. Um, for this big guy, he was actually printed at 100%. But um, for the rest of the army, I've actually started scaling everything down to 80%. Because um, I have noticed when comparing them to a bunch of other models that I have, they were absolutely massive. Like, just monumentally huge. So I figured I'd scale them down. And after doing a little bit of searching online, I kind of found out that 80% uh, was the, the go-to scaling for these guys, which is uh, good to note. So if you guys want to print these at home, make sure you scale on the 80%. Um, I'm not too sure about other people's models, but um, yeah, definitely Mr. Modulo go 80%. Now, as you can see, I did actually have a little bit of trouble gluing these tracks on. I got so much super glue on my hands, you have no idea. Now, I ended up just undercoating these guys black with a can of spray paint. I usually would use the airbrush for this, but things like terrain and vehicles, I tend to go with a rattle can. It's just much easier, and you can cover like a massive surface all at once, and uh, usually it's, yeah, just much, much quicker. I am the tripod. Now, I do want to say a huge shout out to my partner Z for being the, uh, yeah, massive shout out to her, because she is uh, super helpful when I need to make these videos, and comes she comes in clutch when I need ideas for videos, which uh, you'll definitely be seeing some really cool stuff in the future soon. Um, when it came to the base coats, I just started by smacking a bunch of Mephiston Red on this one. Um, I originally used to do a very opaque cover of this, but since we're just going to be going over it with a bunch of paints later, um, I kind of found out that you don't need to do a super thick layer. You can just get away with just tinting the, uh, the tank to begin with. Now using Avalon Sunset, since these guys are going to be bad moons like the rest of my orcs, I um, grabbed a little bit of a sponge and just went over super heavy over the entire model. And as you can see, um, since the sponge isn't super, super detailed, it basically just cuts all the uh, um, high points in and then leaves the shadows, that nice little red color. Um, you will notice too that it does leave a little bit of that red or maybe a little bit too much in some of the panels that we can't reach. But um, easily enough, we just come back with a brush later on. But like you can see, super, super fast to do. I think all these tanks, like all up, maybe took me, I don't know, roughly about a half hour between the three of them like it was it was super quick as you can see i've just grabbed my radius little brush there and i'm just using that avalanche sunset just going around and sort of sponging or stippling in areas that i want to be yellow and it's a super super fast process you don't have to be too neat with this it's orcs have fun with it now i want to do a little bit of battle damage and weathering so i tend to go for some mornfang brand and just using that same sponge after I've cleaned it up, I just went around the model and mostly picked out all of the armor panels. Now, as you can see, you want to make sure that you only keep a little bit of this on your paint sponge. And uh, like you can see here, it just defines the panels really, really nicely. Don't ask me how I figured out this technique either. I was just kind of just painting stuff. And then I tend to do a lot of stuff that does not work out, but every now and again, I just strike gold and it seems to work. Now for the next part, I literally just grabbed some lead voucher and went over everything that was going to be metallic. You do have to be kind of careful when you're doing the rest of the process. Unless you want to recode everything black and then have to go over with lead voucher. I tend to just kind of stay neatish so that we can just come in and we just dry brush everything. Super, super simple and easy to do. 
Now I'm using white scar for this, but I do not recommend anyone buying this paint. I'm just using it because it's really chalky and it adds to the orky effect. Like I recommend using any other white paint um, just for the sake of easeability and uh, overall look. This doesn't do too bad though. So basically I just went around the model and I picked out all of the panels that I wanted to be white. Now you could always do this before you do the weathering, but I tend to find that um, I can just stipple it on and it still looks weathered. I like to get the general gist of the model before I start adding panels and seeing where it needs to be broken up. And uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turns out. And as you can see, I ended up coming back and just doing a little butt panel here and a couple of the other ones around the thing. It's super, super easy to do. And I mean, like, you can pick out any color. I tend to choose white just for the, the sake of ease and it was literally sitting right next to me. But I think I might start dividing all the uh, squadrons with uh, different colors. Next up to bring a little bit of metallic variety, we just grab our brass scorpion. Make sure to shake the living shit out of this because it will not mix nicely. I don't know if it's just my pot, but uh, yeah, it just does not want to do a thing. And basically just went over, picked out a few different panels, uh, mostly the barrels on these guns. Um, from the looks of it, most of these are flamers, so I figured they'd be made of some sort of coppery material. And just picked out a, a couple other panels to give the uh, model a little bit of visual interest. You can go as detailed as you want with this, like these just grot tanks, ultimately, they're just going to be little, little buggers that run around and I don't want to spend too much time on them. I don't like painting terrain and uh, tanks slash vehicles, so uh, I tend to do it really quickly. Now I'm just using Skeleton Horde for this step, but you can quite literally use any sort of wash that you want. You can either make it Nolan Oil, Agrax Earth Shade, whatever it is. This was just super easy to do for me because I had Skeleton Horde on my bench. But um, it just adds a little bit of depth and variety to the panels. And if you really wanted to go ahead and do it, um, you can come through and panel line all the stuff. I don't want to do that. I'm feeling really lazy today. So I just wanted to whip these guys out nice and super quick. And as you can see, it kind of gives it like a little bit of a, a rusty, oily effect. And um, yeah, and I did also quickly panel line this to see what it looked like. Still put it on, kind of smudge it around. And honestly, wasn't too happy with the effect, but um, adds a little bit to the battle damage. Now, this is the model in its completion. And for those who would like to click off the video, I just want to say thank you all for watching. Um, the next couple of minutes of this will be me just updating you on, all, on what's happening with the channel and uh, a couple other things that's going on. So uh, if you want to stick around, feel free to do so. If you don't, uh, be sure to click off now. Don't forget to subscribe because I found out that 97% of people who are watching my videos are not subscribed. So if you aren't, feel free to do that and uh, support the channel. Um, I have genuinely been blown away with the amount of support and the community growth in the past uh, couple of months. Things are really ramping up and I appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch these videos. So thank you all. You guys are all amazing. But um, just in quick channel updates, I am going to be continuing the one video per week, uh, definitely, but I do want to branch out and do a couple other things and a few more projects. It might be sort of long burners. So um, hopefully eventually we'll be able to get multiple videos per week. But um, I just want to give uh, a little bit of a shout out to my partner as well. She has been helping me through this whole thing and I've got a few cool videos coming up with her. Um, other than that, there's not too much happening. Uh, videos have been kind of sporadic uh, times posting. I wanted to try and get them out on Mondays, but um, between work and my other commitments in IRL life, things have been a little bit delayed. So I do apologize for the inconsistent schedule, but I'm hoping if I can get maybe two or three weeks ahead of videos, we can get back to the regular grind and uh, yeah, keep things nice and consistent for y'all. But um, I just want to say thank you. Like, I genuinely appreciate you all guys for all watching this far in the video. Um, I know this is a little bit of a ramble and probably won't make a lot of sense. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the last few seconds of this video. And until next time, everyone, I hope you have a fantastic day and happy hobbying. Bye-bye.